Okay, so you've known Coach Creasy going back to Crowdsdale, right? Yes, sir. Uh, 2003. I was just finishing up college, and I started helping out with Crowdsdale. You know, I knew I was getting into teaching and coaching, and so that was his first or second year there, and we've kind of been together ever since. What's that relationship like? Are you, are you guys friends? Oh, yeah. He's, he's uh, I mean, after 20 years together, I mean, almost on a daily basis, uh, up until a couple of years ago when I kind of transitioned roles, we were together all the time. So, uh, from what I'm told, you helped in the press box for one season before you transitioned into coaching yourself. Where did you coach, and what was that experience like? So, me and uh, Coach Creasy, we were at Trousdale County together. So, you know, uh, I think it was his first or second year at Trousdale. That's where I played, and that's where I started my coaching career. So, uh, he was there as the defense coordinator. Um, I came on staff as the offensive line, defensive line coach. Um, we were there together. I mean, until 2006, I think, is, was his last year there before going to Riverdale um, as the defense coordinator. And then I kind of took over as de- defense coordinator. Um, when he came back in 2008 as the head coach, I just stayed on as the defense coordinator there. So, Miss um, Wilson, uh, one of the ADs at Oakland, she referred me to you when I asked for someone that uh, plays a big role behind the scenes. Uh, or an unsung hero, uh, and you came to her mind. And uh, she said, you, quote, step back from coaching, yet he still comes on Friday nights to be in the press box, spotting for both offense and defense. Uh, Coach Creasy called you a calm voice over the headset that we can trust. So they obviously think highly of you and your contributions. What's your reaction to hearing that? I mean, it, it, it stands for mutual respect. You know, just being with Coach Creasy for so many years and then coming to Oakland with him and, and coaching here, um, it's, it's just been something we're, we're connected, you know, we're used to, we're comfortable with each other, and kind of as I shifted roles, um, taking on a different role, I had to step away from coaching full-time, um, it, it freed me up to um, still help on Friday nights, you know, watching film throughout the week, kind of on my own time, not being emotionally invested in the day-to-day operations, like I think on Friday nights, it kind of just allows me to give a perspective that's, that's not necessarily attached to the winning and losing of the game. Um, I'm really just there to help a friend. You know, Coach Watson on the defensive side, um, Coach Creasy kind of in the offensive side, and just the overall structure and the ongoing of the game. I'm really just there to support them. And so, you know, when they call it a calm boys, I think it really comes from that vantage point of not being emotionally invested in the day-to-day operations of that team. And I'm really there just to support um, the coaches and support Coach Creasy and his staff. So just for somebody that's not familiar with high school football, what exactly are you doing up in the booth? It really varies kind of on if it's the offensive or defensive side. But kind of through film work, kind of understanding who the opponent is, and just years together with Coach Creasy, um, I'm Coach Watson too on the defensive side, I kind of know what they want what they need to hear in order to, uh, you know, make the most of that of that game, their calls within the game. And so whether it's identifying personnel, um, formations, um, tendencies that you pick up on, um, struggles on the offensive side, struggles on the defensive side, just things that you pick up on. And knowing what they can do, kind of what's in their toolbox uh, of play calls that can benefit them, um, I kind of just make suggestions when I see that it's appropriate. So five championships in six years, Oakland's won four of them. Uh, from someone that's familiar with the program, what is it that makes Oakland so successful? Because it, you can tell, especially if you live in the mid-state, that there, it's a special program. It is. A, for me, it always stems from, from the top. Um, and that, you know, with Coach Creasy and it, it, the coaching staff as a whole. And when you build a coaching staff or you bring on coaches that – I, mean, I think three things have been important. And first is the work ethic. Um, I don't know of many other coaching staffs that work as hard or as long as as Oakland coaches do. And, and it's more than that, but there are a lot of coaches in the mid-state and the statewide that, that put in the work. But when you have a staff where trust um, is kind of forefront between the coaches, and egos are set aside. 
Right. So there's not one coach in there that thinks he knows more than anybody else, and there's not a coach that's not willing to take criticism or feedback or recommendations about a game plan or, or ways in which to improve the program kind of itself. And so I think those three things, work ethic, work ethic trust, and you know, lack of egos within the coaching staff really drive that program. And would you say that the players kind of gravitate towards that and take on that personality? Because in, in my experience with the Oakland players uh, this season and last season, any time that I've done an interview, it's essentially the same interview. The kids tell me the same thing. It's, it's like they're repeating a script. Not that they're repeating a script, but they're all on the same page. Um, they're all just very much about showing up to work, doing their job, and uh, getting it done. Absolutely. I mean, I, I think players are drawn to, a, a, to winning. So a winning culture, right? And once you can kind of understand how that winning culture is built, and like I said, from the top, within the coaches themselves, absolutely, that transitions into the players. And players always take on the identity of the coaches. I mean, that's that's true with any program you look statewide. I think you see that. And it's no different at Oakland. So after this latest tough loss in the 6A championship to Houston, what is your confidence level that they can maintain the success that they've had this far, and what's the formula for doing so? You know, the success Oakland's had, uh, it's, it's an oddity, right? It, it doesn't come along each and every day. And, but once you're able to establish a program, which, you know, Coach Creasy coming to Oakland, and having a good foundation there, but being able to build that staff and build that culture, I mean, the success speaks for itself. And sure, you're not going to be able to win a championship every single year, but you can have your team in a position where they are competitive and they are able to compete for a championship every single year. And I don't see, you know, a loss in this year's championship game hindering what that program has been built up to be. Uh, Dewan Morris was in the Tennessee Titans Mr. Football um, ceremony today. Uh, Boo Carter ended up winning that, but uh, Dewan will have more chances. Uh, what did he mean to the team this year? How special of a player is he? He's unique, right? I mean, you can look at the numbers he's put up, um, the way he moves on that field. And Coach Creasy has always been exceptional at, at crafting an offense around a, a unique player. Now, Coach Creasy can build an offense around um, players of similar structure and, and similar stature, but when you have a player like Juan A. Morris, you're able to develop plays and game plans where he becomes, you know, the forefront of, of the plays that you want to call. And so I would assume moving forward that with a player of, you know, Juan Yates caliber, that he will still play an active role and be successful in that moving forward next year. So you're obviously very knowledgeable and passionate about Oakland football, and nobody would sacrifice Friday nights like you do if they didn't care. So what is it that Oakland means to you? You know, Oakland's how I got my, you know, kind of put in the door here in Rutherford County. And so I was given a chance to teach and, and to coach there. And so in, embracing that, that school spirit, it, it's always been a passion of mine, no matter where you're at. So being a part of that environment, you know, that once a patriot, always a patriot, I mean, it will always mean something. Um, but more for me, kind of like I said, as I've had to step away from, you know, actively coaching, it, it's, it's been about just supporting friends. You know, I love the, uh, the coaches there. You know, they're dear friends of mine. And so really it's about just supporting them in any way possible. You know, I, I, <laughs> I would feel perfectly fine if my name, if my name was never known about being a contributor. So I'm just there to help friends out to the best of my abilities. Well, Mr. Keaton, it seems like you do a great job of doing that, and I'm, I'm sure your friends really appreciate it. I appreciate you doing this phone call with me, and uh, best of luck to you in uh, Oakland next year. All right, thank you, sir. Thank you.